a mighty popular revolt broke out in the northern and central India in 1857 and swept away British rule. It began with a mutiny of the sepoys but soon engulfed a white region and involved the mass but the revolt of 1857 could not embarrass the entire country. Most ruler of the Indian states and big zamindars refused to join in due to fear of the British. The modern educated Indians also did not support the revolt. They mistakenly believed that British rule would help them with the modernization of the country. Also, sort of modern weapons, lack of discipline and lack of proper planning are other causes for the defeat of rebel. From the end of 1857, the British had begun to gain ground again. Lucknow was taken in March 1858. On July 8, 1858, a peace treaty was signed and the rebellion ended. Bahadur Shah was arrested at Humayun's tomb and was exiled to Rangoon, where he died in 1862, bringing the Mughal dynasty to an end. With the fall of Delhi, the focus point of the revolt disappeared. In 1877, Queen Victoria took the title of Empress of India on the advice of Prime Minister Benjamin Disraeli. Nana Saheb was defeated at Kan. He escaped to the Nepal early in 1859 and was never to be heard from again. Tatia Tope was betrayed by a zamindar friend and captured while asleep. He was put to death after a hurried trial on 15 April 1859. Kunwar Singh, Bhakat Khan and Maulvi Ahmadullah all were dead by 1859. Begum of Oath was compelled to hide in Nepal. Edward Stanley, 15th Earl of Derby, introduced another bill which was originally titled An Act for the Better Governance of India and it was passed on 2nd August 1858. This act provided that India was to be ruled by the name of the crown. The Government of India Act 1858 also known as an Act for the Better Government of India 1858 got the royal permission of the queen in August and became a law on 1st November 1858 Provision of the Government of India 1858 are East India Company was liquidated Indian territories of Britain were to be governed in the name of British Queen. The Court of Directors and Board of Control were scrapped. The powers of the company's Court of Directors were vested with the Secretary of State for India. The Secretary of the State was to be a British MP and a member of the Prime Minister's Cabinet. He was to be assisted by a council of 15 members. He was also the channel of communication between the British government in Britain and the Indian administration. He also had the power to send secret dispatches to India without consulting his council. By a secretary of state, the British parliament could ask questions regarding Indian affairs. The representative of the British government in India was the Governor General and Viceroy. The Viceroy and the Governor of the various presidencies were appointed by the Crown. The Viceroy was to be assisted by an Executive Council. This act made India a direct British colony. This act abolished the dual government of British India Act. The act also ended the doctrine of lapse. The Indian civil service was to be instituted for the administration of the country. There was provisions for Indians also to be admitted to the service. It was decided that the remaining of Indian princes and chiefs would have their independent status provided they accept British sovereignty.